Good morning. It is December 3rd and today I need to work out and I'm going to talk to you guys also about international casting. So I'm going to work out. We're going to go to the grocery store and also try matcha from a new place. And uh, then we're going to talk about international casting. So that's another question that I get all of the time. Of course, a lot of people want to come to the US to act here, to start a career in acting here because acting is huge in the US. This is where so much is produced. Hollywood, New York, Atlanta is becoming a huge hub. I heard New Mexico is also becoming a huge hub. But anyways, in general, I want to talk about international, uh, not international casting calls, but because that's not very common, especially right now with COVID, but international acting in general. And I actually spoke to two of my friends who came to the US as students, and I met them through the theater department at Cal State East Bay. One of them prefers not to be on camera, but the other person was sharing a bunch of information, and I'm gonna give you information from both of them, of course, and show you clips from my interview with Nikolai. He's so sweet. Um, so I'm gonna give you their perspectives, give you as much advice as I can, all of the links, the visas, all of that information. I'm gonna leave it in the description. But for now, I need to stop procrastinating and go work out. I just went to Paris Baguette and I got a matcha latte from them and if you guys don't know them, they're a chain. Uh, they have a bunch of pastries, coffees. I usually will get the mocha and it's so chocolatey but I wanted to try the matcha of course and have you guys ever had dried shrimp ground up? That's what this reminds me of. I don't know. I'm going to give it one more try. I'm going to buy one from uh, Blue Bottle tomorrow. And if I don't like that one, I'm going to just stick to tea. Um, but I'm going to have lunch and then we're going to talk about international casting. Before you watch the rest of this video, though, I made another video a few months ago called International Casting Call slash Can Anyone Audition to Work in the U.S.? In that video, I talk a lot about what would happen if you did audition for something in the US, all of the fees, all of that money. So you can go and see that video for more information on top of what I'm gonna say today. I am pretty sure these two videos are the only ones that I have done relating to international casting because of course I don't have any personal experience with this. This is just me gathering some information. So I talked to my two friends, Kevin and Nikolai. Kevin is from China and he went to Cal State East Bay for uh, undergrad to study theater that's where I met him and Nikolai is from Germany and that's where I met him as well they both had different experiences and as international students they both told me things that they wish they would have known before they came over here and in general they gave me some of their experience so I'm gonna give you the gist of these conversations that I had with them for Kevin in general he wishes that he had been more of a part of the art scene in China before he came here because he has noticed and you can google this this is very true that a lot of big big stars that are from other countries already were established in their own country. But that's very true. You can use your connections that you create in your country in order to get in here, especially because that will help you with your immigration status, getting a visa. So I'm going to leave the link in the description, but you can get an O visa. This is for anybody that has special talent, special abilities, and you can also uh, get a visa for your spouse or your child, etc. You can read more about it. That visa, the O visa, is basically for people that have an extraordinary talent in science or art, acting, things like that. Athletes do this a lot. Um, so that's a great way to get the visa of course a student visa is another great way a lot of countries also have scholarships that they offer those students that are looking to go to the u.s and of course you're going to have to research all of those scholarships yourself because there's way too many countries in the world for me to be able to sit down and explain every single one so just get on google and google your country international studying and you can start learning about that there of course it is very expensive that's another thing kevin said that doing international studying is definitely a thing for middle class and above because it can get very expensive especially if you are wanting to come to california there's such a thing called in-state tuition which means people that are from california or have lived in california for at least a year and a day 
that does change so make sure you google it before you take any action um as do immigration laws so make sure even after this video something might change tomorrow so who knows but if you have lived in california for at least a year and a day you get in-state tuition if you have not you get uh out of state tuition so i went to college with a few friends who did pay out of state tuition and when i was paying five thousand dollars a quarter or a, yeah a quarter semester they were paying twenty thousand fifteen thousand of course depending on the university if you decide to go to a uc instead of just a cal state east uh, cal state school uh you're going to be paying so much more and going back to the subject of making a name for yourself in your own country first nowadays we have so many streaming services you can make your name in any country through youtube basically any country through youtube and then you can use that and leverage it to get an agent or representation in the us and then eventually make your way down here even if it's once a year for a little while to collaborate and then eventually you can come have a full career here so there's definitely no excuses and of course i know i mentioned this in the other video but it's worth mentioning again the number one thing you should focus on is being a good actor for Nikolai, I do have some clips of our conversation, so I'll be inserting it throughout. But essentially for Nikolai, he found it very beneficial to come to the US in order to be able to put that on his resume. As simple as that, he had a lot of opportunities uh, uh, job opportunities. Being an international student, you get exposed to a whole new country, a whole new culture, you know, visas, passports, whatever you need to get. I think I was in a lucky position because I was a foreign student. A lot of paperwork is being not done for you, but they, they give it to you uh, pre-sorted and you only need to fill out everything. So I, of course I needed to get a visa, but it's a student visa. There is no, there is no barrier to, to or whatever. There's no, no real requirements. You need to have a, you need to be subscribed to the university. And if you have the, if you're allowed to go, which is also not a hustle at all, um, you will get the visa. What was your thought process in coming to East Bay? I finished my master's thesis and I was waiting for my professor to, to finish it off. I, what I wanted was really partly like the, the first motivation was, okay, you've never been, um, um, you never had a semester abroad Mm -hmm. while you studied so you should definitely do it and it was a very good decision every job i had so far studying abroad has been a very critical factor in in getting the job mm -hmm. but i went to the theater uh, area because i knew that um that san francisco was great at theater and I, it was always like kind of a, a hobby or something that i did in school out of school may in university not so much anymore we are more focused on, on film Mm -hmm. uh, and behind the camera that was really really interesting it opened up my mind completely it was so different when you when you asked for for the interview and everything i was thinking a bit about what is the best thing because i have worked with international actors international film oh, crews yeah so um, in my opinion if someone from germany comes to the s like it is a completely different story than what i did absolutely so um, in my opinion, the, the, the best thing someone can, of course, do is work on the fucking language. Mm. Uh, you will never get a role if you always sound like the Germans. If you, or if you, you will like, get a role, but you'll be boxed into uh, a German You will be the character. Nazi. You, you, I mean, you can't play a Nazi for, for 30 years. That's exactly. probably, and probably it's, a good it's not fun career. You but always have one role. If, if you want more roles, if you want more diverse roles, it's, it's a lot about looks, definitely. It's films. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you want to play something, you need to get first get rid of your accent or you need to play with your accent. One of the things that really stuck out to me that Nikolai experienced in the US was the amount of dedication that American actors had. And granted, he was at a university where we studied acting through theater, not necessarily on camera, although we did have an acting on camera class, but he really enjoyed the fact that actors in the US were very dedicated, that worked really hard and were wanting to rehearse, wanting to get better at the craft unfortunately it is very true whenever somebody is casting for a particular role as americans a lot of americans write for other americans or at least they want the accent to be non-specific so they were, will want an accent that is american versus something that might be quote unquote distracting to the audience so that's another thing and i totally agree especially being an actor who 
seize on casting calls, uh, you know, whenever they want an accent, that's the only time really when they're wanting to accept even people with an accent. They will say for this commercial we or for this role, we want somebody with a Mexican accent. Other than that, if somebody has an accent and it's a little too distracting for their liking, they're not gonna cast that person. That's another thing you can do right now is start studying English and start, start, and start studying the accents, the American accents. Thank you so much to Kevin and Nikolai. I'm gonna see if I can talk to any other of my friends that I went to college with. Big shout out to Nikolai and Kevin for giving me all of the information because obviously I am not an international student myself. I didn't come here as a college student, so I wanted to interview them and give you guys as much information as I could in case you guys are looking to do that or you're starting your research on that. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any additional tips, articles, places other people can take advantage of where there's more more information about this specifically because I don't do this a lot. I don't talk about international casting a lot because I don't know a lot. So I would appreciate it if you leave left anything in the comments for other people to view. But I'm gonna leave this uh, vlog now and I'll see you guys tomorrow for day four of Vlogmas. And at the end of every video, I feature another channel. This is today's feature. If you would like to be featured on my next video, make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and leave me a comment.